thank you everyone for attending today. My name's Kelly Taylor and I'm the Learning and Development Manager at Millbank in London. And I'm Heather Morrow and today we're talking about managing a busy inbox. I am the Director of Project Management and Training at Loeb & Loeb and the mailbox has definitely become something that is overwhelming uh, for all uh, professionals. So we have some tips we want to share with you today. So the first thing is good email practice. So um, Kelly, I know you have a lot of uh, tips on this. You want to go ahead? Yes. So, I mean, this is something that I cover in the course that we run at Millbank. And it's just some practices that if everybody did the same would help, you know, everyone in the firm to, to, to work uh, faster, really. So the first one is subject lines, keeping them short, keeping them descriptive. Everybody's probably received an email where the entire, you know, conversation is written in a very long line in the subject line. Also using things such as, you know, please read, action required, FYI can help. So I've done this today. I needed some people to read something urgently. So I've added please read into there. Action required. I've used that in the past when I need uh, some lawyers to, to return something to me very quickly. The action required in there has helped to get it back uh, in a prompt manner. And obviously FYI can help if you, uh, you know, but for people who just want to you know, know that maybe that's not an email they have to read as a priority. Kelly, yeah, like I also use draft a lot. So in brackets, draft. That's um, a good one. Yeah. So anything that's going to kind of catch the eye. And I agree about being short in the uh, descriptive. I've had uh, people write all uppercase a novel in that <laughs> description and it is impossible to decipher, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. The next one, communicate as if your email is being read in a vacuum. This was a manager that I worked for a long time ago and her absolute pet hate was FYI, please read below. And then she had to scroll through a whole train of emails to find out, you know, the gist of what was being discussed. So the one thing that she disliked was please just, you can put FYI, please read below, but please put a summary of what that train includes just in your top level so I know and I don't always have to read through. Also thinking, you know, have I made it clear to the reader? Have I attached all relevant documents, email, you know, emails that they might need? Things like that can really help as well. The next one, dealing with conversation changes. So this is something that I've added to my course recently. So you might be speaking in a, a chain with a group of people on a conversation, let's say matter A, and there's lots of replies going backwards and forwards on it. And then the conversation moves on to something different. And at that point, if somebody within that group of recipients changes the subject line to a new subject line, that can help you um, you know, later on, if you're just looking for, you know, looking through your subject lines to find that particular email, also could help you with, you know, searching for it as well. So the don't other, be... Sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> so the other thing on the conversation change, change is getting rid of the previous thread. So, you know, going back and, you know, if it the subject's change, get rid of all the other conversation. It's in another thread, so it's not needed. But definitely changing that subject line makes all the difference, being able to find that email later. Um, yeah. Searching. Or just start a new email, you know, a new blank email and start the conversation again. But make certain that something changes in it, the subject line that, you know, people can see that. And then think about when is the best time to send that email. So hopefully with your internal recipients, you know, people that you email regularly, you'll know when you get responses from them best and when you don't. At my previous firm, it was always the case, don't send an email on a Friday. What I've learned at Millbank is uh, that Friday is quite a good day to get a response. So just thinking about the recipient and thinking about when are they going to read it? You know, when's not a good time at my organisation to, to send that, that it might get missed in, in a bunch of other emails that are going out. And I would add to that, be aware of the time zone. So, you know, if you're sending an email uh, for somebody that's on a totally different time zone, and you send it your middle middle of the or early morning, and it's their middle of the night. Yeah, you know, their might their phone might alert. <laughs> so you know, be respectful of people's time time zones. 
Um, you know, I might work on the weekends, but I don't assume my coworkers are working on the weekends. So one of the things I do is I, I'll draft emails, but I leave them in my draft folder. And then I set a reminder on my calendar, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes on uh, managing that busy inbox to go ahead and send that um, email out when it is actually working hours as opposed to a Sunday. Exactly. Great tips, Kelly. Thank you. So let's talk about systems. So yeah, I mean, I would say I'm a, a believer that, um, you know, everyone has their own system of how they work. And we're going to talk today, aren't we, Heather, about a few different systems. You have a very different system to me. And what I would say is that when I joined Millbank, I thought I'm going to work completely differently. I'm going to have a zero email inbox. I'm going to keep it in a manageable list. Uh, and I was going to copy one of my colleagues and then it just didn't happen for me. So I think just finding what works for you uh, and using some of the tips, hopefully from today, can help with, uh, you know, working out what your system is. Right. So that we can't really do a poll because this is a recorded session, but I wanted to put this poll up here for people to think about how many items are in your inbox. And uh, so, Kelly, I'm going to ask you, how many items are in your inbox? Well, I'm not typically following my system at the moment, but I have allowed time on Friday to do that. So I would say more than 500 at the moment because it has got a little bit out of hand. I think, Heather, I could guess how many is in your inbox. And how many are in my inbox? Definitely less than 100 items, probably closer to zero. Probably, but we've been on the webinar for a few minutes, so I probably have 10 <laughs> to 12 in there already. Okay. So um, if you answered more than 100, as Kelly pointed out, she has to do some catching up and uh, organizing, but we want to talk about the different systems uh, you can use to organize when you have more than 100 items. So Kelly, you want to talk about your system? Yeah, so my system I've called the parking lot system, really. Uh, what I try to do when I'm being good with my inbox is ensure that anything in my inbox is still to be actioned. So I look at my inbox and, and I know that there is nothing in there that, you know, has completely been finished. So what I try to do is I try to delete what I can out of my inbox as I go along. Uh, I, I reply and I'll move to folders. I do use folders, but I usually use a folder once that action is completely finished off. And then I can just go and find it if I need it for reference later. I move things to calendar um, and task, which I know is something that we're going to be talking about next. But my absolute golden rule with my parking lot is if I open up an email and I skim read it and I don't do anything with it at that time, I always mark it back as unread so I know that I've got it later on to, to, to complete. So when I look at my inbox, the amount in brackets next to it of unread messages tells me how many I haven't responded to at that given time. That's great. So... Um, so, I just mentioned these, but sorry to move your slide forward. That's fine. So, I mean, I use the right click markers on red um, literally as soon as I've skim read it. So I never move on without marking it as on red. That's how I rely on knowing what I need to respond to. Um, and then what I find I do is that, you know, I've admitted I've probably got 500 plus emails in my inbox at the moment, which isn't what it should be typically. Um, and what I can do is as I think, right, I've got, you know, 30 emails I've got to respond to. I try and go through my inbox and, and get to those. But what quite often happens for me is I'll get distracted by some of the things that are already read that are in progress. So what I typically do there is change my filter. So at the top above the inbox, you've got the all filter and you've got the unread. So I will quite often move it to unread there and then um, just go through the 30 that I haven't responded to, then put it back to all and then go back through my, my inbox. I use the unread feature a lot on my mobile device um, on the weekends because I, I'm not able to file as readily on the weekends, right? And, you know, certainly don't want to spend my weekend time doing that. Um, so I will uh, filter by the unread um, during the weekend 
So that's a great tip. That's a great tip, Heather. Okay, so your one takeaway tip. Yeah, so I would say either build time into your week to use your system there. So like I say, I've allocated time on Friday. This week, my inbox has become unmanageable. So on Friday, I'm going to go through it and go back to my parking lot system, delete, move to folders, uh, markers unread, you know, move to calendar. Um, you know, and or, you know, you can either build time into your week to do it or just go back to it when your system is getting unmanageable so like i say i try to do it weekly sometimes it doesn't happen but it's definitely at a point for me now where it's unmanageable so i have to allow some time to go back to my system so building time in to, to go back to your system would be the main thing that i think can be useful okay so my system uh so i really do work for as towards a zero mailbox. Uh, we had a rollout recently and my mailbox at the end of the day was at 500 emails and my brain just about exploded. Uh, <laughs> but I did get through them before I signed off for the day and made sure it was back to zero because I knew it was gonna explode again the next day. Um, so I leverage actually conditional formatting to really highlight what I need to address that's um, you know for me. Uh, so if the email comes in, Dressed to me, it highlights in a bright pink color so I can glance over even when I'm in a meeting and see what things are coming in that I need to address. And that really uh, helps. I'm also on a bunch of help desk tickets. I changed their color. Uh, so they go to a light gray. So they kind of fade into the background. Um, I do like to look through them to see what uh, things are trending. Uh, so I have an idea of what calls I'm going to get. But I really don't need to address that because we have a team of help desk people that handle those calls, but I like to keep an eye on them. So I do work hard to touch an email once. So I delete it if I don't need it. I file it um, if I do need it to keep it for any reason. And then I have actions that I take. So I calendar it. I know that Kelly mentioned calendaring it. Um, I also have an action today folder. The theory of the zero mailbox um, and what I teach is having this action today folder is where you're actually working out of. Um, so you, similar to Kelly's where she's leaving them in her inbox to address, I move them to the action today where they need like follow up and that type of thing. And I get through those emails also on a regular basis uh, to make sure there's nothing hanging out there. Unfortunately, there's some like Recordings, I need to go back and watch some action today folder is not at zero, uh, but I do work towards it being closer to around 100 um, on a weekly basis. So similar to Kelly, I'm going back and double checking that I haven't missed anything. But the calendar, it really saves me. I put that stuff on my calendar and then, you know, it reminds me on my calendar and I don't have to you know, keep track of that email. Um, of course, you can write rules to handle any uh, recurring FYI emails that you don't need to view. Rules can be a little sticky. I had one rule one time that if it had ILTA in the name um, to move it to a mailbox for me to or a folder for me to review later. And at the time, my uh, boss was on uh, was the ILTA president. <laughs> and what I didn't re realize was it was moving all of her emails to me uh, into that folder. So uh, that can be uh, tricky. So just keep an eye on your rules if you do uh, write rules. So my one takeaway tip is, I think it's kind of back to the same thing. Kelly says, you've got to find a system that works for you, right? Um, I have coworkers that work really successfully with having 20,000 emails in their inbox. But let me tell you, they miss stuff. <laughs> Um, you know, I have to send reminders saying, hey, did you see this email? Because it goes under the radar. And luckily with uh, new technologies like Teams and that type of thing, that's helping streamline some of those uh, emails that may have gotten missed in the past. So we're gonna talk about some of the strategies. So uh, Kelly, I'm gonna turn this over to you about your search folders, because I, I love that you use that technology. Yeah, so um, the search folders, uh, if you go on a slide, I think we've got um, an example. Yeah, demo. Um, yep. Okay. So these are the things we're going to talk about. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Leveraging search folders, adding frequently used folders, favorites, 
conditional formatting. So we're going to talk about the steps to do that. I also leverage something called quick steps. So if you haven't seen that before, we're going to, we have a couple of slides on that. And of course, we both talked about utilizing calendar. I know that some people utilize tasks. Uh, my task list at some point became too overwhelming. So I decided the calendar was a best bet. Um, and then I also have VIP alerts, um, which you can set on your phone. And I think Kelly, you got that tip from me and you've set yours now too, which is awesome. And then uh, leveraging your out of office assistant message. So we'll continue on. So let's talk about the search folders. Yes, yeah, so, um, you know, I use uh, sometimes flags and categories for things and I might um, categorize something and move it to a folder um, uh, and then flag something and put them into different folders. And then down towards the bottom of your folder list, and it does get missed for that reason, there is um, an area sort of around about where the outbox is really in that folder list called search folders. So if you right click over search folders and go to new search folders, it shows in the, the pictures here. What you'll see there is there's a number of different criteria that you can set up for that search folder. So you can create search folders from email that is specifically from a person um, or to a person, um, emails that are sent directly from you, wherever they are in your mailbox. Um, you can set ones on categorize mail and choose what kind of category of mail that you're using. Uh, to find everything that is flagged throughout your folder structure as well. So choose your uh, criteria and say OK, and it creates a search folder for that. You can rename those search folders as well if you want to. Uh, but what I also do then is usually add it to my favourites in order to be able to you know, see it right, right at the top because I don't want to keep scrolling down that long folder list to find it. So right click and add it to your favorites once you're ready and leave it in your favorites while you're using it. And then obviously you can right click and remove it from your favorites when you don't need it. So for those that have the unruly mailboxes, actually leveraging the search folders is a great idea, right? Because you can quickly yeah. organize it. And also I, it's a way to yeah, then quickly move things, right? Definitely. And I think you're so right, Heather, you know, a colleague that I work with has not a single folder. He keeps absolutely everything um, for years and years that he's, he's worked at Millbank in, in his one inbox. So using things like this can really help you find things quickly uh, when you've got a very large inbox to, that you're working with. Okay, so I know you mentioned adding the searches to your favorites, but I also recommend adding other folders that you used frequently um, to your to your favorites. Um, so the, the outbox is a great tip. Uh, Heather, our head of IT suggested that on a course that I was running once, and it has saved me a lot of time now because obviously the outbox is is further down your folder list, so you can miss it. But you know if emails have got stuck in your outbox and you right click and add it to your favorites you know I've, I've sort of thought a few times recently why is no one responding to my emails and checked the little brackets next to that outbox and there's been a few that have been in there so that I think is really helpful adding your outbox to the favorites yeah for me it's drafts things get caught in my drafts I think I've drafted something and I close my outlook and it closes it, you know, to the draft folder. And I'm like, why is anybody responding? It's sitting my drafts. <laughs> okay. So conditional formatting. So I mentioned this uh, a little bit earlier. So I color code my emails. Um, so if an email is addressed specifically to me, um, and you can kind of see on this uh, screenshot, you have this where I am the only. So this is the condition you can set. So I just click the add. I say, you know, emails to me, set the beautiful font color to bright pink. And then I go into this condition and I check the where am I, uh, where I am and the only person on the two line. And it makes a huge difference. I mean, it's, it's an amazing tool, especially when you're sitting in Zoom meetings is you can just kind of glance over at your other screen and see what's going to need your attention or maybe need your attention even during that meeting. Uh, without somebody having to um, completely interrupt your meeting. 
I think that's a great tip, Heather, and I'm going to use that one because it's funny how you and I, we sort of use things very differently, really. You know, our, our, we manage our mailboxes differently. And I think that's one that I'm going to use. You know, I use it from the point of view of um, colour coding emails from certain people. So emails from the partner that I, I mainly work with come in in a different colour to me just so, so I can pick them out. But I think yeah. the great thing about conditional formatting is you can have, you, you know, you, it's not just one colour. You like you said, you use the grey for things that come in that aren't necessarily things that you're going to be working on coming as tickets. So I think you can really make use of the colours there to for different uh, different people and different criteria. I agree, and I do recommend that for assistants that have a pairing, where you know they need to see their emails from their particular attorneys um, to make them different colours. Because I think, as you said, you know this is about effectively managing it. We're not going to control the volume, so we got to find a way to control the volume. So next is quick steps. Um, so, and I think Kelly, you also do teach on this, right? Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, I love quick steps. These are really great. So it's up in the upper uh, part of your Outlook. There's a little ribbon there, and it has a little dialog launcher that you can uh, click to uh, create a quick step. Um, and then, of course, it has its own management tool. So I use it uh, to file to, uh, I kind of has some big mailbox, big folders like um, technology, where it's kind of like the dumping ground for the stuff that good to know about, but I don't necessarily need, you know, it's not a specific project or it's not um, a related to a specific thing, but I want to keep it. Um, yeah, I use that. I have a quick step that just moves it directly into that folder. That's not to say the folder doesn't exist. It totally does. Um, so do you have any other quick steps you've got set up? Yeah, I mean, I like the the ones in the the left hand. So the to manager and uh, the team email. When you if you haven't used those before, when you click them, you have to just use first time setup on them, and you can use them as they are. So the forward to manager, you can just put a manager's name in there, um, and then every time you you use it, it will work. And the same with team email. But obviously, then you can go in and edit them afterwards if it's not team email that's appropriate. But it's you know like email to client or, or you know whatever it is really um you can customize these completely and then in in the past um at a previous firm we used it to create a template for secretaries to book meeting rooms with reception so you can use it that sort of uh you click a button and it opens up a template with a subject line and you know the the main body of the the email already written so then you've just got to add in the details and be able to send it off so it's great for things like that as well yes definitely so um i know we both utilize the calendar and tasks um so i i like having my cal mini calendar the little calendar here um rather than having it down at the bottom i actually have it displayed on the uh, right hand panel of my outlook um, and the reason is I like to see what my agenda is throughout the day, right, <laughs> at a glance. So I do keep that up. Um, I use, um, I know, Kelly, you drag and drop. I'll let you talk about that in a second. I actually use this reply with meeting button a lot. Um, this is when you're in an email, you click on this reply to meeting. It opens up an invitation with all the people that are on the thread um, in the in the two line. You can toggle it, you can delete them, or you can just toggle to an appointment, they won't get anything. Um, and then put it on your calendar. I think I use that probably number one uh, way to get things on my calendar. So Kelly, you want to talk a little bit about the drag and drop? Yeah, I mean, you're right. I use reply with meeting as well. And what I like about that is obviously it keeps the whole email chain in there. Yes. It's the same with the drag and drop, but just for an appointment. So um, what I'll use quite often first is the peak option, which you're displaying there. So if I think, right, I need to do something with this and I need to do it next Friday, I don't want to go to my calendar, check next Friday and then go back and drag it and drop it. So I'll use a peak, have a quick look at next Friday, I think, right, that's clear at 11 o'clock. And then I just drag the email from where it is in the inbox or the folder and drop it over the calendar icon at the bottom. And that brings up an appointment as well. Then obviously you could turn that into a meeting request if you wanted to. But, you know, I use a bit of a combination of the, the two of those, the drag and drop and reply with meeting. All right. 
So uh, setting VIP alerts on the iPhone. So I know that uh, Kelly, once I mentioned this, you're like, oh, I got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> so it's we've, been, <laughs> we've included both instructions. So um, if you have the Outlook app at your firm instead of the iPhone email app, um, it's pretty easy. You do have to go and uh, make the person a favorite. So my boss is a favorite. Um, and <laughs> what happens is when uh, he emails me, I get an alert on my phone. So it just pops right up. So I don't have any other notifications turned on. Uh, the other people who are emailing me, I'm pretty much on my computer, you know, a lot. I don't really need to see it when I'm sleeping. However, if I'm sleeping and my boss messages me, I need to know, right? No, <laughs> my phone's in another room. But it is helpful to be able to pick up my phone and see see the alerts from my boss. And luckily, he doesn't email me a lot. So maybe don't enable that if you have a boss that emails you. <laughs> um, and then we include the iPhone email. So it's uh, similar. Uh, you just tap VIP. Um, and we will uh, have these slides available in this recording available after this. So uh, you'll be able to go back and read those if you're not sure on the instructions. So this is one that I really like. I leverage my out of office replies to manage the expectations of my coworkers. Um, so I know we're used to using it when we're actually out of the office, but what, like right now I'm doing this recording, right? I'm not available. I'm not checking email. You know, I send out of office that says, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm in a meeting recording this thing, you know, don't bother me type thing. <laughs> not quite in those words, but it really can be an effective tool um, to let people know when you'll be replying to them. So I always provide the time frame that I'll not be responding to emails and I stick to it. So, you know, if I'm going somewhere where I can check emails, I don't, uh, you know, I just say I'm at an appointment, you know, and they might get a response, right? But if I'm going somewhere where I'm not going to be able to respond to them at all, I let them know, hey, I am not going to be available during this window. Um, and then I do stick to it. So even if I do pick up my phone and see an email, I don't respond to it during that window if I've set that parameter. And then always provide contact information for other resources. Don't leave uh, the people hanging, so to speak, on when you might be getting back to them. Uh, any tips from you, Kelly, on this one? I mean, I, I think that is a great tip. And I think the actual one of sticking to it is really important, Heather, there. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, I, I do that if I'm going to be out for, you know, a couple of meetings, I'll put my out of office on and, um, you know, provide the re resources. I think the sticking it to it one is one I'm going to take away from from this and, and do that. Uh, you know, I think a pet hate of mine is when you get an out of office response from someone, it's just like, I'm out of the office no dates of when they're returning so i think adding that that information is just what you know people need exactly exactly yeah you know, sometimes it's just a quick appointment you know it doesn't need to be you know but you do want to let people know you're not necessarily sitting there you're at your at your office so to speak so what, Kelly, what is the one change that has made a difference to the way you work? Well, I mean, I suppose for me, it's the, the marking as unread really has really helped me to, um, you know, manage what I haven't responded to. And if I ever miss that, you know, if I'm in a rush, then then I'll sort of go through my inbox and think, oh, now I missed that email. I haven't responded to it. So keeping them as, as marked as I'm read really does help me. Today, I would say what I've learned today and what I take away from the session today is to stick to those. When I've said in my house of office, I'm not available to stick to it, to manage people's expectations. Because if right. you don't stick to it, they'll think, ah, oh, she said she's not available for two hours, but I'm sure she's going to reply. And then a helpful oh. tip for me today. Yeah. I agree. How about you, Heather? Yeah, um, for me, the one change that has made a huge difference is actually that reply with meeting. Um, I use that when I learned about that. I use that so much. Um, I just 
If I have an email, I calendar it. I really take that action, put it on my calendar. My lights just went off in my office because I'm holding two still on this uh, mm -hmm. Zoom. <laughs> um, so that that really had made a difference in the way I work and really sticking to the idea, not letting the mailbox get too overwhelming. I mean, it took a while to get it under control. Uh, there was a time in my life when it was insane. Actually, during the pandemic, it went really crazy. And I think that's what led me to actually finding methods to manage it a little bit better. And a lot of the things that I put in place were actually around the pandemic, you know, letting setting those expectations um, with the out of office. You know, I used that a lot during the pandemic because even though I was working all of hours, there were times when I was in meetings and you know, it's not like somebody could walk down the hall and find you, right? So um, that's when I really learned to use that out of office. Now that I'm back in the office, I probably use it less because I figure somebody can walk down the hall and find me, right? Uh, yeah. But it is really a great tool. So we want to thank you for watching. Um, my resource that I provided here, the 15 minute inbox, this is the book that I read uh, during the pandemic that got me to get my mailbox under control. Before the pandemic, yeah, I was probably like most of you, I had a good amount of emails in my inbox, uh, but it was really the pandemic that led me to like, okay, you cannot, this is too much, you know, it's too overwhelming. I couldn't keep track of things and what needed to be done. Um, so I really took the ideas that uh, Juiced put together in his book um, about, you know, how to manage it, really touching emails once, not spending multiple times going back. I do like Kelly's uh, solution for marking them on red if it's still something she needs to take action on. But that delete button is a really great button, I do have to say. Yeah. So I mean, I think it's, you know, it's a stressful thing having a lot in your inbox that, you know, and, and not having control over it. So, you know, any any system that anyone uses or any things that, you know, features that they take away from this today to help just manage the inbox is, you know, one step further, really. Right. And both Kelly and I would love to hear from you if you have a great tip uh, for managing your inbox that we didn't cover today. Um, both of us are always open to ideas because both of us do teach this class uh, for our users. Thanks again for joining. We really appreciate it. Thank you.